Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? It's July 24th. I'm Dr. Duck Long. I'm a world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. And this is my attempt at a much kinder, nicer coronavirus community. And we're, today we're going to talk about um, herd immunity. What is it? Is it real? Can we count on it? What's happening? I want to dispel some of the myths that uh, people are talking about. We're gonna talk about Sweden. We're gonna talk about coronavirus parties. And I'm gonna try to do it with minimal cussing, <laughs> if possible. So if you're finding value in these coronavirus videos, please hit share, because all of us wanna get through this a lot sooner. Amen, can I have an amen? Come on, let's do this, all right? So thank you guys. Uh, if you're catching this on the replay, you can fast forward to about the five minute mark and I will get started then. Uh, in the meantime, I'll say my hellos uh, for all the people who are coming. Hi, Kim Lucas, how are you? Dolly McCraney, great to see you. Stacy, Stacy, what's up? Where are you calling from? Let me see, where are you guys for all calling from? Lena, what's up, Donna? How's everybody doing? Mr. James, oops, that's Heather. Good day, Aussie, awesome. live in Idaho. Welcome back, I know, man. So this is my attempt to um, to be much nicer and kinder and bring together a coronavirus community that can talk calmly and uh, without the hype. I'm just going to present the information. You get to decide. Uh, I will say hashtag no dickheads. No dickheads allowed. Um, you know, you can take your politics elsewhere. You can take your conspiracy theories elsewhere. We are going to get down to what's really happening so we can get past all this. Hey, Big Star, Paula, Jean, um, the Sugin one. Awesome. Clovis, California. Hi, Diane. Hey, David Stewart. Glad to see you. Thank you very much. All right. Hi, Izzy. Thank you. So Detroit, Michigan, Abdur, stay safe. Stay safe. Delaware, Amy, enjoy the weather, social distance, be careful. Julia from Arkansas, thank you for liking my live. I appreciate that. Go ahead and hit share for me real quick. Florida, Dolly, stay safe. We're gonna talk about no tickets. We're gonna talk about um, uh, herd immunity today. The science behind it, herd immunity. What is it? How can we get there? Hey, Mandy, what's going on? Desiree, oh, I'm in uh, Albuquerque currently, Desiree. That's awesome. James, <laughs> I won't hold back, brother. I won't hold back. Um, be careful, Joe. It's on fire. Hey, there's my girl, Celia. What's up, Celia? Hobbs in Mexico is in the house. Thank you guys so much for sharing the broadcast. That means a lot. Um, so we have Poland in the house. That's up. Sherman, Texas in the house. Mr. Robert. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, Tell me what you know about herd immunity. Do you have people in your life that are talking about herd immunity? Thank you for watching, Giselle. Florida, stay safe. I know it's bad. It's badness. Um, what's up, Amy Lockman? Oh, beautiful Clara Atkinson. How are you doing? San Diego's in the house. What's up, Rosemary? Um, so. If you didn't watch my video yesterday, I talked about, um, good morning, Heather. I talked about the death rate, the lagging death rate that we got ahead um, that um, explained why the numbers were going up, but the death rate was going down. That was yesterday's video. You can check that out. Um, and um, I'll edit that down, put it on YouTube. I'll also edit this down and put it up on YouTube. We have one more minute to go. So let's get our hellos in. Hey, Mary Margaret, what's up? Joyce, Josie. Hmm. Cindy Dale is watching on YouTube from Indianapolis, Indiana. Oakland's in the house, also from on YouTube. Don't know what her herd immunity is. All right, Shane Sweet, what's up, brother? Professor Kelly, how are you doing? OKC. Stay safe. Hit share for me, everybody. We're going to get started right now. Let's do this. Oh, I got somebody. Heather Mitchell from Arizona. A hot spot. Please stay safe. All right. All right. Marisol, Chicago's in the house. They went through a hard time. Let's get started. Okay. 
Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Duckville, and I'm a world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. Uh, you might recognize me from doing a coronavirus video called How Coronavirus Kills You back in early March when this whole thing started. It eventually got 16 million views. I uh, was a bariatric surgeon. I am now retired, and I treat primarily the obesity community. So I have a pretty good following. And we have a challenge. We've been talking about coronavirus in this challenge. I've been preparing my people in, my in the challenge for the hardships that are coming. And um, I stopped doing coronavirus videos to the public because, well, one, I felt like there was a lot of noise um, and I wasn't really adding to being very helpful. People knew what it was. We were on lockdown. But I mostly stopped because of all the negative haters and the ugly comments and the and just, just rudeness, rude people. So... Um, I stayed quiet throughout the summer and slowly watched as we rolled open too quickly and our numbers skyrocketed, got out of control. A lot of uh, ugliness was happening and that made me stay away. But now, you know what? We, we got to get our shit together, man. Like, so we're really screwing this up. And in the United States, um, the rest of the world is looking at us in horror and we have really become the laughing stock of laughing stock of the world and this is really um meant to be a safe place so um we really don't care about your politics coronavirus does not care about your politics your religion we here we are here trying to create a calm coronavirus community of love and just and support to get us through this so um, we're just really cutting through all of the bs so if that's you just give me a good heart Give me a good heart. Like we're we're all about love, and we're all in this together, and we're all trying to get through. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, and herd immunity. Okay, so first of all, what is herd immunity? Number one, let me put some hearts up here. What is herd immunity? Okay, um, herd immunity is this concept that enough people will um, have antibodies against a disease, in this case, a virus, that um, will protect the people who don't have antibodies. How does this work? So imagine there's a population of people, here are my peoples, <laughs> here are my peoples, and let's say seven of them, seven of them, have immunity to this particular disease. We'll call it coronavirus. But that leaves, wait, that's eight. Seven of them, <laughs> seven of them have uh, immunity, but that leaves three who are vulnerable, okay? So if seven of them have immunity and, they and this virus encounters uh, these people, they it won't spread because it will just die the body will these seven people have antibodies to this disease and so when a virus enters one of these bodies one of these people they're able to fight off the disease and so the disease does not does not spread so in this population of 10 these three people are protected by these other seven because these other seven kill off and don't, therefore don't spread the disease. Therefore, these three never catch it. Maybe one catches it, but not three. And that's called herd immunity. The power of the herd, the group um, protects the, 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 un, the unprotected. Okay, does that make sense? Clear as mud, right? Okay, so why is this important when we're talking about coronavirus? Because a lot has been made about, let's just get herd immunity, okay? Some countries tried this early on. And um, so people were talking about this and they were talking about making it like, you know, we should be shutting down the United States. We should be like Sweden. We should try this herd immunity thing. Well, I'm gonna tell you, most of those countries that tried their herd immunity thing quickly, quickly shut down when they realized it wasn't working. Okay. And now the people, the Swedish people, um, regret, 
I, I don't want to speak for all Swedish people, right? They did basically a soft, soft shutdown, recommended, not terribly enforced, didn't really shut down most businesses. They did a little bit of social distancing. They encouraged masks, but it was a kind of a soft shutdown, right? So their numbers lagged. And so we saw news reports about this herd immunity, this soft shutdown working for Sweden. So why couldn't we, why couldn't we try that in the United States? And what happened with what happens with social media and the internet, once a story gets picked up like that, it takes on a life of its own. And so you start seeing all these memes, these posts, these links to, to saying, this is stupid. We shouldn't be shutting down the United States. We should be doing what Sweden does. Well, they forget there's a lag time. You fast forward and Sweden actually has one of the highest infection rates in the, in the, in the world and one of the highest um, case fatality rates in the European nation. More importantly, there are neighboring countries, uh, the Dutch, the Netherlands, things like that around Sweden, um, which are doing much better than Sweden did. They did shut down, Sweden did not. And now Sweden has approximately four and a half times the cases, four and a half times the cases of their neighboring Nordic states, countries. So, Sweden is not a good example. So for all of you, just put a comment if you have a friend or loved one who says, who says, look, it worked for Sweden. We shouldn't be locking down. Share this video with them and explain to them that it's just not, not true. It doesn't work. Okay, so let's explain herd immunity and then we're gonna do some, some math. <laughs> Stay with me, some math. Okay, first of all, okay, number one, I define herd immunity. Number two is this. Quit it with a fucking coronavirus parties, okay? Do you guys know these young kids, relatively young, anywhere from 20s to the mid-30s, that are having coronavirus parties, and they were trying to catch coronavirus, and therefore they'll have immunity to it, and therefore they'll um, maybe get herd immunity, whatever. Whatever stupid reasons they're 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 talking about. Right. So comment if you know somebody who's been to one of these coronavirus parties or are just totally ignoring the recommendations. They're totally like going out to bars and they don't see the big deal. They think they're invulnerable. Comment if you know somebody like that. So first of all, you need to tell them to stop because we don't know if we can get herd immunity. OK, so number two is stop it with the coronavirus parties. You look like an idiot. Um, and here's why. Tip number three, we don't know if we can get herd immunity with coronavirus, okay? Why? The latest research that we know about, and you're starting to hear stories about this, is that for whatever reason, coronavirus antibodies, these are the, um, the proteins inside your body that fights off the infection. So once you have uh, an infection, like a virus, you develop antibodies and these antibodies could last your whole life like the chicken pox. Um, once you get chicken pox one time, you have lifelong immunity or you get a chicken pox vaccination, you have lifelong immunity. Um, but other uh, viruses might need booster shots or a series of shots or might the vaccinations might last 10 years um, and then you'll need another shot. Um, because your antibodies disappear. So the latest, hit share for me real quick, because this is really important. The latest research seems to indicate that for whatever reason, and we don't know why yet, but coronavirus antibodies are disappearing in the nine to 10 week range. So there's something very odd about this coronavirus, wink, wink. Okay, there's something odd with this coronavirus, you need to be taking it a lot more seriously and you got to cut it out with the uh, coronavirus parties because we don't know if catching it makes you immune to it. Okay, this is super important you understand. Okay, back to herd immunity. So one, we might not, this is tip number three, we might not be able to achieve herd immunity because antibodies are apparently disappearing after nine to 10 weeks. 
Tip number four, let's do the math. Some dickheads <laughs> said I was gonna try not to, to be ugly. I didn't say fuckers. At least I didn't say fuckers, right? So some people are sitting there saying, no, we need to open up because we can get infected. Then we can have herd immunity and we can, you know, these businesses are going, I get it. Businesses are going out of business. This is terrible, et cetera. I, I understand that. People are losing their livelihoods. They're losing everything they worked for. I get it. But let's do the math. What happens if you just say, open the fucker up? You open it all up, okay? Well, let's just do the math in the United States alone, okay? Hold on. I knew there was a reason why I wanted my cell phone. So we're going to do a calculator function real quick, okay? So there's 330 million people in the United States, approximately 330 million. Y'all see that? We're just going to do United States alone. You can do this for your country if you like, wherever you're watching from. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, in order to have herd immunity, remember my example, the seven people? There's a reason why I picked seven out of 10 people. You have to have at least, we think, about 70% of the population be immune to the virus in order to have herd immunity. 70%, that's seven out of 10. That's why I use that example. So there's 330 million people roughly in the United States. Let's multiply that times 70%, 0.7. Okay, times 0.7, that gives us 231, 231 million, my finger, oops, clear that, hold on. So 330 million, 330 million times 0.7 gives us 231 million people. 231 million Americans would have to catch coronavirus in order for us to have herd immunity, assuming the antibodies last, okay? Now remember, this is a novel coronavirus and you guys are followers, so what does novel mean? Novel means new. So it's not in our community. We don't have people who are already immune to it. So everybody, 231 million Americans would have to catch coronavirus for us to have herd immunity. Remember, we don't have a treatment for coronavirus, okay? The current death rate, the current case fatality rate this is people who actually have coronavirus positive tests and who actually has an outcome. The outcome is either is one of two, death or recovery. So of the approximate 4 million people who um, have um, caught coronavirus in the United States, uh, approximately 2 million of them have outcomes. Luckily, uh, most of those have recovered, but we do have 145,000 deaths. You do the math, it's approximately a 7% case fatality rate. That's what it is. In the United States right now, at the current rate, it's 7% case fatality rate. Dr. Vaughn, that sounds too complicated. You can't trust the numbers. Some people are lying about deaths. You have not enough testing, too much testing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, give me a number you like. What's the number you like? If you do what the current presidential administration is doing, they're touting a 3.8% mortality rate. Because then you what that does is you take the 4 million and um, you take 145,000, you divide it by the 4 million cases, and that's roughly 3.8%, right? So, so that's what they're touting. So let's do the math. If 231 million Americans have to catch um, coronavirus, and I'll use your administration's numbers, you multiply that times the mortality rate of 3.8%, so that's times 0 0.038, 0 0.038, that would equal 8,778,000 Americans would have to die. 8,778,000 people, Americans, just Americans would have to die. Right, Dr. Vaughn, we, we don't test enough. There's actually more coronavirus cases, which means the denominator is actually bigger. So the death rate's even lower. Okay, dickhead. 
let's just do it your way. We have 231, 231 million Americans who'd have to catch coronavirus to get herd immunity. What's your death rate? It's 1%, Dr. Wrong. 99% of Americans survive. Okay, okay. Times 0 0.01. That's 1%. Your numbers. 2.3 million Americans would have to die if all you did was open it up. That's a 1% death rate. That's the dickhead's number, percent. We need to open it up. How would you like 2.3 million Americans to die? This is epic stupidity on, on a grand level. More than wars, more than you know, World War II, World War I combined. This is craziness, right? It makes no sense. On top of that, we don't know if we can even get herd immunity because the antibodies are going away after nine to 10 weeks. We're not sure. We're starting to hear anecdotal stories of people who tested positive for coronavirus, got over it, tested negative, and then catch it again and positive test again. Now, we're not sure if that's a lingering problem or if it's a, um, if they totally got cleared. Most scientists are thinking that they actually never completely cleared the virus, um, but they didn't have, but they tested, they didn't have enough of the virus left to test positive. So they tested negative, but it, the virus was lying dormant and then flared back up for whatever reason. So we're not sure is my point. Now, here's another problem. This is a 1% death rate. 1%, you're a 1% death rate, dickhead. Okay, this is just death. Of the 231 million people uh, who caught coronavirus, 2.3 are gonna die, you're 1%, right? That leaves 2.1 2 million Americans, 2.1 2 million Americans, I mean, two, 220, that would leave 229 million, 229 million Americans who've recovered, quote unquote, recovered. And here's your problem, number five, whatever number we're on. Not ever, just because you recovered from coronavirus, just because you didn't die from coronavirus, doesn't mean you're, you're the same. We know that there is la lasting morbidity. Mortality is death. Morbidity is illness. So there is lasting illness with coronavirus. We are seeing patients who have memory loss. Comment if you know somebody or maybe yourself who has memory loss from coronavirus. They recovered, but man, they, they're having trouble staying focused. They're having trouble remembering why they went to the grocery store. You're gonna see a new thing. And if you see it, just remember, you heard it from Dr. V because it's not out there. There's gonna be a new syndrome something along the lines of coronavirus induced chronic fatigue. You're going to have a chronic fatigue syndrome. So you recovered, you didn't die. You can tell uncle, uncle Bobby, I didn't die. You were right. Herd immunity, but now you have chronic fatigue. Why? What's this? What's the big deal with chronic fatigue? Dr. Wong, the average age of people testing positive in America now is 41. I'm fucking 47. The average person is younger than me. And they are people in their 20s and 30s and 40s. That's your prime working age. You are most likely the primary breadwinner for your household. And now you can't go back to work. You try to go back to work, but you're fatigued. You're tired. You can't complete your task. You can't do what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're a teacher. And you're trying to teach these kids, but you can't stay focused. You're tired all the time. You can't run around. Okay. Chronic fatigue, right? Coronavirus induced chronic fatigue. You're going to start hearing about that. And you heard it from Dr. V first. Next, we're, we're having patients who stroked parts. They have weakness on one side of their body. They have memory loss. They're not the same. They have speaking aphasias. They're have, suffering strokes. You're having, you, you guys heard about the blood clot stuff. So now you're having people that are suffering amputations because they lose blood flow to legs and toes and fingers and things like that. You have patients who maybe had a heart attack and they did CPR and they brought them back. Okay. But now you have a weakened heart. 
You've got recovered patients. This is probably the worst one with chronic lung injury. And I'm not talking about like Uncle Phil or Grandma Patty. You know, Grandpa Patty, the smoker. Hey, hey, honey, come give Grandma a kiss. Hey, can you give me my pack of menthols? See, these people want to sit there and say, oh, but they're old and they were already going to die. And I saw this really nasty comment that was like, but these are just old people. Well, it was it was probably a blessing to the families that this person died. Like, fuck you. What a rude comment. Blocked. You know, like what type of dickhead says that? Says, oh, this is probably a good thing. It was probably a blessing to the family that grandma died. I mean, that was so, like, we have lost our fucking minds, okay? But here's the problem. Yeah, some of it's, like, old people and people with smokers. That's the Chinese data, which I don't trust. It was old smoking men. But what we're seeing now in America, average age of positivity is 41. Average age of people in the ICU is in their 50s. And now they're having chronic lung issues. They survived coronavirus, but they used to be runners, and marathoners and athletic and fit and worked out. Now they can't catch their breath. Now they can't run down the block. Now they can't play with their kids. Okay. That's the problem with the herd immunity argument. Yes. I mean, then, okay, I'll give you 1%, but look at the morbidity, which is probably going to be 50%. When you put all of the wide spectrum together, the chronic fatigue, the memory loss, the everything together, there's probably going to be, that number is probably going to be about 50%. So you got 229 million Americans who had to catch coronavirus for you, fucker, to get your herd immunity. Half of those, so now you're looking at 110 million of them are going to have some sort of lasting morbidity. And now how do you feel, dickhead? It's not good. This is not good. Herd immunity is not good. Now, here's the problem. Vaccines. I'll do another longer talk about vaccines. Don't believe the hype. We're not really sure, right? Yes, it's amazing what they're doing. But just remember, the record for the fastest um, vaccine was a little over a year done in Russia, a little over a year, okay? Um, so even if we get a vaccine next spring, it's record setting even January or February, okay? There are just some things about a vaccine that we don't know. For example, will it last? What is happening with these antibodies disappearing after nine to 10 weeks, right? We're not sure yet. I'm not, it might change. This is called science. Science changes, guys. It's not fear mongering. It's not trying to confuse people. It's called, you know, just figuring it out. And yes, vaccines don't always work. Look at hepatitis vaccines, hepatitis C. We still have it. We have vaccines. They're not always effective. You have to take multiple doses. So even if the government are, were able to develop a vaccine by freaking January, hallelujah, one, they're talking about probably having to do two doses. And, if, and really, 70% of the world's population, 70% of seven, eight billion people, 5.6 billion people would have to have this vaccine two doses. That's 11.2 billion. You like my math? I can double. 11.2 billion doses of a vaccine. Do you know how long that it's going to take to make? And now everyone gets all excited. Oh, but the news says like that they're going to produce 100 million vac uh, vaccines. 100 million doesn't even get us to the herd immunity. The 70% of, in just America alone, 231 million Americans would need to get it. And they're talking about 100 million doses? You're not going to even get a herd immunity with this first run. And we don't even know if it works. And who are you going to give it to? Are you going to give it to the young, healthy people who need to go back to work, who need to spend money, economy, and open up the businesses and hire people back? Or you can say, no, give it to the most vulnerable, the old, the elderly, the ones who are most likely to die. Dude, these are serious conversations. But why? Why give it to them when they can just stay at home and let the working active people go out and use those doses so we can get closer to the 70% we need and then bring grandma out? 
next year <laughs> in 2022? Or do we give it to the to the elderly and let them live their lives the few years are left? It, these are tough questions. That's my point. It's not that easy. Okay. Now listen to this. What if it doesn't work? What if the vaccine doesn't give lasting protection? What if you have to do it every single year? What if as you give um, vaccinations, you select stronger and stronger strains of coronavirus, just like I think that's what happens with the flu. I don't take the flu vaccine. It's stupid. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm all for vaccines as long as it makes sense. Polio vaccine is intended for the polio virus. Chicken pox is intended for the chicken pox vaccine, you know, disease. The flu vaccine is a statistical guess. What, what strains are going to be active this year? Let's try to figure it out. Shit doesn't work. And I'm young and healthy. I'm not a vulnerable population. Blah, blah, blah. You can do. That's a whole different talk. I can do a talk about vaccines later. So don't hang your hat on vaccines. And I would not. Let's say there's a miracle cure and the government says, we like we crushed it and we have a vaccine available in November or October. I ain't fucking taking it. You can take it if you want, but I'm just going to tell you, there's not long enough long term data to see one if it's effective two any sort of side effects. So I'm telling you, at best, you're talking the spring, maybe for a vaccine. And then you would have to ma massively produce it to get herd immunity, right? All in all, this is in summary to say, stop it with the stupid coronavirus parties, stop it with the bars, stop it with the conspiracies, stop it with the bullshit. It's my rights, it's blah, 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 masks don't work. Masks and social distancing has worked for every other fucking country in the planet except for the United States, because somehow you're special. Come on, let's not do that. We all are in this together. We all want to get over this. We all want to stay healthy. We all want to support our local businesses. We, you gotta get past the politicism, politicizing it, the conspiracies. We all wanna go back to a new normalcy. <laughs> I said it again, a new normalcy because it won't be the same normalcy, guys. I hate to tell you that. We're in this for a long term, and I will leave you with this last note, then I'll take questions. We are in this for the long term. It's a new normalcy. It will never go back to the way it was, and this is just the fucking beginning. This is not the middle. This is not the end. We're not anywhere near the end. This is not the seventh inning. This is the fucking first inning, maybe second inning. We're, we haven't even got in the United States. We haven't even gotten over the first wave, right? This is the very beginning. We are in it for a long term. We need to be nice and kind to each other. Cool. If this video has been helpful for you, please do me a favor. Please hit share now because the more shares, comments, likes that we can get onto this video, the sooner we can get over this. And as always, I will edit this down and put it on youtube for you to share thanks a lot guys all right how did i do nice enough didn't cost too much give me a one if i did a good job if i explained herd immunity was it too confusing uh more cussing less cussing i don't know can you share it with minimal cussing i don't know so give me a one if you liked it if it's uh helpful for you and get your questions ready <laughs> my buddy my buddy bob strobel is awesome. Hey, you guys follow my buddy as Bob. He has these this camera network for Jackson Hole and shows like the forecast and the beauty and everything like that. So thanks for watching, Bob. Hey, thank you guys for all the ones. Appreciate that. Man, look at all this coming up. Good. Thank you. Juan, Brenda, Celia, Christy, Kimberly, Melanie. Thank you. Oh my gosh, look at all these ones. Thank you. So I'm glad you could could share. <laughs> Kai says, I like the cussing. Uh, cuss is necessary. <laughs> Speak the language the kids can understand. Wow, my gosh, look at all these ones. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate that. I love the positivity of this. Um, you know, I went back and actually read a bunch of comments from yesterday and very few 
um, negative comments. Tammy, what are your thoughts about wearing masks? You should totally wear masks. If we can get 90% of people to wear masks, we can get over this a lot, lot sooner. Michelle, Dr. V, outside of social distancing, wearing masks, hand hygiene, what can we realistically do to fight this? Um, you can get sunshine because that will boost your immunity, your immune system. Your sunshine is great for other things than just vitamin D. Lowers your stress level. Meditation does that really, really well. Um, share this good information. Stop it with politicizing. Honestly, like really stop it with the politicizing. It's not about politics. This is not going to uh, like mysteriously disappear uh, after the election. That's a whole different type of stupid. Vitamin D is super important. The best way to get it is sunshine. If you need supplements, take your supplements. Thank you so much. What about gloves? Christopher wants to know. Gloves will help you, but remember, you can also spread it if you're touching stuff. So uh, it helps. And I, I know it's weird because grocery store handlers, uh, waiters and waitresses wear gloves. If they don't change gloves between items, it makes no sense. It's protecting them, but then they need to dispose it too. Also, uh, the Black Plague is still with us. So this is actually, it's still here. We have uh, the Black Plague is also known as the Bubonic Plague. That's, that's, let me show you. I really did go to med school. That's caused by bacteria. You can Google check me. It's called Yersinia pestis. So that's the, the plague. And uh, we still have your Yersinia plestis um, every single year cases. And we actually have it in the United States too. So someone posted this link the other day, coronavirus has the black plague. I mean, China has the black plague and they made a big deal out of it. Like, dude, we have the black plague every year. Um, uh, Cheryl Morris is absolutely right. You can learn energy work. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, Jennifer must sell Somoderm. I sell Somoderm. It's an amazing product, too. All right. Thank you so much. Curse away. No problem here. Thank you for your hard work. I appreciate that. Let's take a few questions. A couple more questions uh, from um, uh, YouTube. What about the affinity for CD147 receptors? I don't know much about that. I'll, I'll see what that's all about. Thank you for pointing me that way. Uh, shoppers spraying more by wearing gloves. Uh, I don't know if they are or not. I don't think we really have a, question, a study on that. Bob, do different blood types have different responses to this disease? Yeah, we are not completely sure, Bob. There's some early data uh, concerning uh, type O, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how, how it comes out. I'm 10 days post-op. How scared should I be? You should be pretty scared. If you're post-op from bariatric surgery, which means you're most likely overweight, morbidly obese, which as we know is the number one risk factor for bad outcomes from coronavirus, it's true. You're also depleted nutritionally, so you don't have the nutrition because most likely the 10 days post-op from bariatric surgery, you're sipping, you're mostly trying to stay hydrated. So, and um, so you're probably not getting the nutrients. Um, number three, you're also catabolic at this stage. Bariatric surgery is a, um, hormonally active surgery. So it's throwing you into a state called, um, uh, catabolism, which is the opposite of, uh, uh, anabolic steroids It's catabolic, you know, it's catabolic, it's breaking down. So you're, uh, at high risk right now for, for infection. So stay safe. How much will virus spread with children returning to school in some states? Lance, this is a great question. I'm going to actually do a different coronavirus video on kids. Um, I think that um, kids are susceptible. Uh, I'll give you a taste of the, of the kids' talk. Um, our kids are uh, less healthy than other kids. We have childhood obesity. We have childhood hypertension, sleep apnea, childhood diabetes, type 2 diabetes, not type 1. And um, so they're much sicker. Uh, so we know that this will hit them. Uh, if they're, if you, if your school zone, if you live in an area where it's a hot spit, a hot bed, I would not open it. I think Miami, Florida is crazy for opening up uh, schools. My, my child, my, my home address is Houston, even though I'm currently in Albuquerque right now. And we were going to put my four-year-old in pre-K. Um, her mom and I have decided that we are going to uh, homeschool her. Uh, and I think Houston currently is doing homeschooling um, 
online learning um, through, I think the first to, through until spring. That might have changed recently. New moms and their newborns. Newborns are, I believe, will be at risk. Although I don't, we don't really have scientific data on that. You should be really careful. They have baby immune systems. They are just starting to develop uh, antibodies through mother's milk. Uh, oh, speaking of which, one of the best things you can do, if you can, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not breast shaming anybody, but sometimes um, mother's milk is the best thing. Breastfeeding is um, amazing because you're passing mommy antibodies to baby, and we know that for sure. And um, if you're able to breastfeed, uh, I would do that as long as possible. And most days uh, indicate two years of breastfeeding too. A lot of baby stuff. Um, and the answer to that is yes, if you're in a hot spot. How should you prepare for an outbreak in your community? Oh man, this is good, Mary Beth. So um, use the usual cautions, hand washing, masks, et cetera. Um, there's no need to go crazy and stock and that sort of stuff. Um, we need to spread, we need to wipe down our surfaces with ethanol. Um, we need to maybe if, if you're in a total hot spot, in addition to masks, I would consider doing face shields and I would definitely consider wearing gloves and disposing of those gloves, um, in an outside trash bin before I get into my house. Don't throw them away inside your house. This is a hot spot area we're talking about. There are different things you can do. Maybe plug up your nostrils if you're particularly paranoid uh, with um, certain disinfectants and things like that. Um, so those are pretty extreme things there. All right. Uh, yep. Uh, Holly Joe is in my weight loss challenge group. We open that up uh, every month at the end of the month. So next week we open this up and we've been talking about preparing for coronavirus since uh, April. Uh, we've been really, I've been giving them a daily update, just five minutes. We've been working on their money. There's a financial crisis that's about to come. I can talk about that at a later date. Uh, I've been talking about the numbers. Uh, my, my people in my challenge have been preparing for this uptick, these higher numbers. Um, I sounded the alarm. Uh, I left Houston in towards the end of June because I knew this, I was like, dude, I'm getting out of the oven. Why would I stay in the fire? So I left and came to New Mexico. I've been in New Mexico since July. And now we're about to go through uh, a two week camping trip. Uh, my family and I are gonna go on a two week camping trip up uh, through Wyoming and, Col and Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, see uh, Mount Rushmore um, to get away from these hotspots. And hopefully uh, two weeks from now, two, three weeks from now, Houston will have a shit together and numbers will be on the downstroke. Um, so, um, so <laughs> we won't run out of toilet paper. Um, so I'll, I, I'll end it on this question from YouTuber watching Catherine Patterson. Is this virus now airborne? This virus has technically always been airborne, Catherine, Kath, Catherine, Catherine, um, because, um, uh, but it's airborne in, uh, droplets and these masks and don't listen to these assholes. Um, any type of face covering will decrease the penetration of droplets. So that's why that works. Yes, the virus is smaller than the pores of the mask, but you're trapping them using electrostatic forces because they're in droplets. It's a lot like the dryer sheets. If you can imagine dryer sheets, have you ever had that electricity, electrical cling? Um, it works like that. Um, and um, what else was I gonna say? So oh, airborne. So no, the, the virus is not naturally aerosolized is probably the term that most people mean when they are asking me if it's airborne. It's not aerosolized, um, like the virus is not out by itself. It's in droplets and um, it can become aerosolized, which is one of the things that's confusing people. Um, in certain things like in surgery. So that's why you might see concerns about surgery and shutting off elective cases. But when you cough and sneeze and talk and sing and praise the Lord and that sort of stuff, those are droplets coming out. And it's the droplets with um, um, virus in them. Okay, one more and then we will run. Um, so let me see. Houston will be a while. Lots of people aren't masking up. We'll see. 
Uh, DD, this is a good one. I will end this uh, with this. Uh, will this virus ever go away? The answer is no. And I'm going to teach you a new term real quick. Write this word in the, the, um, the uh, comment section for me, please. So we're talking, so, you know, most people knew the term epidemic. This is an epidemic. Obesity is an epidemic. Smoking, smoking is an epidemic. A lot of people didn't know what the word pandemic was until coronavirus. So we're in a pandemic. And here's a new word I'm going to teach you. I want you to write this in the comment section, which we've been talking about in our challenge, in my weight loss challenge, which is this. Uh, it's endemic, E-N-demic. This coronavirus will now become endemic, which means it will always be with us. It will always be in the community. We're never getting rid of it. The word is endemic, E-N-demic, right? So you can educate. <laughs> you can try and educate people who are conspiracies, who thinks it's a hoax, who thinks it's overblown. Say, say, Uncle Billy, this disease, this virus is now endemic, E-N-demic. And you have not heard the term en endemic, but if we get this kind coronavirus community together, we share this video enough, please hit share. We start using the word endemic what watch you'll see it'll spread to the news it will spread to the reporters it will fucking finally spread to uncle billy who will finally mask up and get over it okay so we can get past this it is now endemic it's soon to be endemic right all right i love you guys stay safe blessings to our teachers who are going through a very chaotic period now um build up your immune system don't stress out focus on the safety of our kids and you know your job just much like blessings to our um, nurses and doctors and um, assistants um, who are um, take doing the best to take care of patients teachers now have to do their best to take care of our students last thing uh, i keep saying that but um here's what i want you to know doctors nurses and medical assistants techs hospital workers they are not the front line. Let's stop saying, hey, you know, w well wishes to the people on the front line, the doctors and nurses on the front line. They are not the front line. No, I love them, but they're not the front line. They're the back line. Who's the front line? The real front line is us, the people of this world, the Americans. We are the front line. We are the ones that are gonna determine if this coronavirus goes crazy or if it ends. We decide if this coronavirus stops. Hashtag aha, can I have an aha? Maybe hashtag we are the front line. So let's start a movement. Let's start making people understand that we are the front line. It's our actions and our behaviors. It's whether we mask up or not, hand sanitize or not, wash our hands or not, social distance or not. We are the front line. Hashtag we are the front line. I am the front line. Maybe that's better. I like we. I or we. Let's take a vote. I am the front line. No, a hashtag we are the front line. So it's everyday people. And then unfortunately, um, the healthcare providers uh, and workers are, um, are the back line. And we need to do our job so that we don't overburden them and um, that they can take care of our sick loved ones, right? So if you've liked this broadcast, you like this video, you like this call to action, you like this kind, co kind COVID community that, um, that um, it's not about fear mongering, it's not about calling people names, it's just adulting. <laughs> we just need to adult. <laughs> so hashtag we are the front line and blessings to the teachers and healthcare providers. Thank you guys very much. Love you and um, see you next time. Bye.